Okay, today I'm gonna to show you how to transition from a two-legged bridge to a one-legged bridge, and that's gonna help you improve what you're doing in the bridge, but also if you're working on glutes by doing a bridge to help you with one-legged stuff. It's the one-legged strengthening of the hip and the glute strengthening that's gonna help you with knee control, hip stability, and if you're doing glutes anyway with a bridge, you might as well start working on some single leg stuff. This is gonna help you with that. So, first thing we're gonna work on is ones from the floor, then we'll go to the bench, then we'll start working on ball. So, the ones on the floor, transition on a two-legged bridge. So, a standard two-legged bridge when you go up and down is pretty easy, right? A lot of you may be putting bands around your knees to increase your glute max and external rotators, that's great. Make sure though, when you're doing a bridge, you really want this knee, okay, around about nine degrees, not too far in, okay, doing that, around about sort of nine degrees. You also don't want it too far out, otherwise you're gonna turn it into a hamstring bridge. So comfortable position there, your feet flat on the floor. You can go toes up if you want, because you're still driving through your heels with this exercise, but feet on the floor is absolutely fine. Keep your knees hip width apart. Now, with this one, this is what we call a glute bridge. It's not a articulated bridge, so it's not a Pilates rollback bridge where you're flattening your lumbar spine. It's not that, okay? So we want to try and keep your lumbar spine in neutral and not let it go into flexion before you come up, okay? So we're not worrying with this exercise about spinal mobility. We actually want to have spinal stability, so keeping that locked on there by using your pelvic floor, your inner core, to keep your transversus on. That will keep you, will help you stabilize through here. Breathing up here so you're not holding your breath. So making sure that that section is not moving, if you like. You're only moving with your breathing. Then you've got a little bit better ability to push through your feet and activate your glutes while you hinge through your hip joint. So the movement of this one is stabilization here and you think movement here to get my pelvis up, I want to be thinking about driving the heels down. So the movement is heels down as though I could push my heels through the floor, if you like. What that will do, I get a bit of heel action going on there, which gives me my trigger to activate my glutes. So I'll get better glute activation, if you like, better glute contraction when I push through my heels. You'll feel that working when you do that. You just gotta make sure that you're not arching your back as you come up, okay? So make sure you don't turn it into a back extension exercise. You should be thinking about stabilizing here, and you'll notice if you're back extending because you tend to start flaring at your ribs. So if you can keep those down without flattening your back, so it's just down and tight here, breathing here. When you push through your heels, you should think about keeping this stiff and only bending here. Now when you get about halfway up, that's when you can add on a bit of glute squeeze and butt squeeze as though you sort of bring them together to get that sort of external rotation and extension. Remember glutes will do external rotation extension, so you definitely don't want your knees rolling in because that's not going to work them very well. You don't really want them rolling out. You can have them out like a frog if you like, but I want to work on stability. So people who are doing band of work and frog bridges like that, that's fine for glute max, but we're trying to work on stability for things like hip and knee, so I want to train my legs in a straight position. So if you are going to have a band on, don't pull it out. Just keep the band tension in that position, if that makes sense. So when you drive through, you're trying to keep your knees parallel, and that's going to be quite important for when we transition to the one leg. So you've got the two legs sorted, you've got your core sorted, you're not moving in your back, you're driving through your heels, you know what your glutes are doing, if that's all working for you and your back doesn't hurt, then you can transition to one. Now what I wouldn't do is just go straight leg to one, okay? What you've got to try and do is think about we're doing this for hip stability, okay? So we want to work on, if I push and do my two-legged bridge, I've got to work out how do I then work on, say, my if I'm going to lift my left leg, my right side here needs to then stabilize and work hard. So I've got to push down a little bit more on my right heel. I've got to think about a little bit more core here and then lighten this leg up to eventually the point where I can float it, bring it back down, and then drop down again, okay? Now, that's actually quite hard. Some of you might feel like, oh my God, I'm a hamstring, because your brain is trying to work on everything through the leg. 
to do that job because it's a new task. Eventually you'll work on the hip doing it rather than the hamstring trying to help out too much, okay? So with this one, I would definitely transition from one leg to the other to start with because otherwise you're gonna start blowing out one side too much or cramping. So tighten here, push up. Don't just lift it, okay? You need to spend about five, 10 seconds working out how am I gonna keep my pelvis stable and not let it drop on one side. So if I was gonna raise my right leg this time because I'm switching, I wanna work on my left buttock, trying to contract it more, push through my left heel more, and keep this pelvis up when I raise my leg. Okay, I don't want my pelvis to drop. That means I'm letting go through there, okay, through my hip stabilizers. If I'm not, if I come up and I don't let go, I know my hip stabilizers are working well, as long as my hamstring is not trying to take over and do the extension for me, all right? So your transition from two to one is simply floating one leg off the floor when you're up in a bridge, putting it back down, and then going down. Once you've got that, then you know you can do one-legged hip bridges because you know you've got enough pelvic stability on one side. Because I see people doing one-legged hip bridges, and you can call them hip thrusts, you're like, and they're doing this sort of work, but their pelvis is all dropped off to one side. Okay, so when they're doing it, they're technically sort of in this position, which is not gonna teach you too much about how to stand on one leg, run, jump, that sort of stuff for your hip or your knee, okay? So if you're doing this for glutes, you've got to make sure that that pelvis is nice and stable and level, all right? So once you've got the floor sus, then you need to go to the higher onto a bench. You go to the bench before the ball. The ball is a stability optional, instability if you like. Um, but you definitely need to work on the depth first so you know what you're doing on the ball. The reason why this is sort of a more advancement is you're going deeper into range, okay? With this movement here, we're only going from this amount of hip flexion to here, to hip extension. When your feet are up on the bench like this, can you see how I've got a lot more hip flexion now, okay? So I'm gonna use my glute max more because I'm in more hip flexion. All right, so it fires more when you're more in hip flexion. So from this position here, keep it, again, same rules, keep it 90 degrees. If I go back too far, I turn into a hamstring elevated bridge. I don't want that. I want a glute elevated bridge. So from this point here, all the same rules, and push up. You can see how much range I got there, okay? So it's a lot more through here. And you've really got to make sure that that first one on the floor is nailed, because if you don't have that right, and you start arching your back or rounding it, those with back trouble will start getting pretty back pain up at this point here, okay? So you can't have here be extending through your back to try and get yourself up there and having lazy glutes. You've got to have this really tucked in there at that point so you're nice and neutral. So the whole way through, this section cannot move out of position. The whole movement has to happen hinging through the ball and socket joint through there, and obviously hinging through my knees a bit. And my power, instead of pushing through the floor, is pushing through the bench. So once you've got that one sussed and you've, you can work on, okay, I can get on that range, I'm not getting back pain at the top, I'm keeping flat through here, I'm really feeling out through, maybe the top of the hammies and your glutes, they're working well, again, you can have the band on, you transition to one. Now when you transition to one, you probably have to take the band off, okay, otherwise it's gonna pull your knee in. So with this one, again, up to the top all the way, and then look at your pelvis where it is, and try and think about how am I gonna get one leg off and down, and again, again, that's going to be harder. You're going to feel probably the hamstring more again. So you have to condition yourself through this. You may not get or be able to get as many reps and sets out as you can with two legs. Okay, so maybe you have to dial that back a bit. Maybe sets of five or two sets of five or something like that while you're working on conditioning. Because if you try and do too much, you're going to get really sore the next day. So just make sure that you're, again, not dropping down when you raise one leg. And eventually, hopefully, what you can do is then go up and down a one keeping your pelvis stable, all right? Pretty intensive exercise at that point there, but so good for that single leg strength. Then, once you've got that sorted, of course, you can put weight on, right? And some people put weights on, a barbell or something like that. I would probably turn it into more of a um, hip thrust this way, if you're going to do that, a traditional hip thrust. But again, that's putting load on, right? We're talking about knee and hip stability, okay? Training for single leg stuff. There's no point at that point going and putting load on if you're training for that. If you're just training for glute size and glute strength and aesthetics and power with two legs, that's where you'd go to, all right? You put the barbell on, where you go. 
But if you're training for sport and change direction, single leg stability, jumping, landing, go to the ball. So this point here, what you do now, and don't lock it into something else that's cheating because then it's not unstable. You've got to have it separated. You go and do the same bridge as you did before in this position here. Okay, so now I've got a really unstable surface of where my feet are. So I have to work harder through the entire chain and work on some neuromuscular work to try and keep this all stable to do the same job. Now, the rules change a little bit about where your feet are because it gets a little bit hard. But again, you can start off with this position here and just get used to a unstable surface. It's not too much harder than the bench. You just got to control that ball a little bit more. But when you go to one, I want you to put your feet together. Okay, if you try and do one, it's going to roll all over the shop. The idea is not being able to raise one leg with one foot on one side of the ball. It's about having an unstable surface on one leg. So you can bring those two feet together. Okay, so at this point here now, you can go up with this, dig that leg into the ball, raise the leg, come down. Can you see how I was wobbling all over the shop? When you start off, you might have to dig your elbows in. Eventually, you'll be able to get up and do it this way, where you come up all the way at the top and then try and raise one leg, which is very difficult for me at the moment. So I dig my elbows in, keep it stable, keep it sensible, come up, keep your pelvis stable, raise one leg, bring it back down, and then down I go. Okay, keep those rep ranges low. And then eventually, when you get to the point, when you do one-legged, put it right in the middle of the ball. Okay, so instead of like having two very close, you go right in the middle of the ball, get that sorted there, so the ball will sort of over, so if I'm doing my left leg, it's over on the left hand side, and then away I go, stabilise through here, up I come, and down. Now you can see how it's wobbly. Once you get sort of three sets of ten, you may start conditioning that, you'll get less and less and less wobbly. And that's just going to help you on your journey, or one of the exercises that's going to help you with a little bit better loading through one leg, a little bit better awareness from here to your hip when you drive through your foot about knee and hip stability. Hope that helps you. See you next time.